A good morality system can add a lot of value to a game. Challenging the player with moral choices is a great way to make things a lot more interesting. But at the same time, what if you don't want to make any choices at all? And what if instead of choosing to be good or bad, you just wanted to have some fun? Luckily, there's a way to circumvent these moral quandaries, as some games and their morality systems can be cheated. You just need to find the right loophole. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 morality systems in video games that can be cheated. Number 10, the Howdy of the Saint, Red Dead Redemption 2. Anyone who's played Red Dead Redemption 2 can agree its protagonist, Arthur Morgan, is a really lovable guy. I would go as far as to say, he is my favorite protagonist in all of video games. Just about. He's so lovable, in fact, that it feels almost criminal, pardon the pun, to lead him down the path of a low honor scoundrel. He doesn't deserve to be remembered for all the bad stuff he did, but on the other hand, it's also pretty hard to resist the fun of gunning down random strangers or the extra money you can make on the side through theft and robberies. Thankfully, the honor system in Red Dead Redemption 2 is broken enough to let you get the best of both worlds. All you need to do is just say howdy to a bunch of strangers. Because honor doesn't just relate to killing and helping people, but also less obvious things like socializing, you can easily offset your sins by greeting the locals and telling them to have a nice day. You gain smaller amounts of honor by acting friendly rather than helping people, but it still takes only five hellos to recover all the honor you lost from committing bloody murder. You might be a monster, but at least you're a polite monster. And apparently, that's what counts. Number 9. Healing Civilians – Infamous Second Son Just like the original Infamous game, Infamous Second Son comes with a karma system that determines your reputation in the city of Seattle. The main way in which you gain karma is by making important choices throughout the main story. But this said, you can also get a small boost by helping civilians in need. Or a huge boost if you're really efficient with it. Usually healing injured civilians is a one and done kind of deal. You can find them unconscious, you press a button, gain some karma, and then you can't interact with them again. The encounter is random, so looking for more civilians can be pretty tricky. Unless, of course, you memorize the locations in which you helped someone. Because the world gets reset after each side activity, you need only do a quick job after helping a civilian, and then you'll be able to do it again. Then it's just rinse and repeat. It only takes a couple of hours of healing civilians to max out your good karma. You can act like a complete maniac throughout the main questline and still come out as a hero in the final mission, so long as you remember to be Seattle's Paramedic of the Year. Number 8. Devil's Highway Fallout 3 The karma system is one of the most iconic parts of Fallout. It keeps track of each decision and action you take, and then uses that information to determine whether the people of the wasteland will treat you like their savior or the ultimate boogeyman. In Fallout 3, there are even a couple of achievements for maintaining an exceedingly high or low level of karma all the way up to level 30. And while it can be quite tricky to acquire and then keep enough points to get the achievements, if you want to get the bad karma one, there's actually an easy and quick way to do so. Best of all, you don't even have to kill or rob a single person. If you have the Broken Steel DLC starting at level 24, you can purchase a perk called Devil's Highway. The perk instantly sets your karma levels to very evil, meaning that if you're close to reaching level 30, you can just take Devil's Highway upon leveling up and instantly get the bad karma achievement without ever having to act like a villain. Well, aside from cheating in the most evil person competition, that is. That's as villainous as villainous gets. Number 7. The Murder Threshold – Dishonored The thing that makes Dishonored such a fun and satisfying experience is all the supernatural abilities and weapons that let you get really creative with how you eliminate your enemies. However, killing people counts towards your chaos level, and so unless you steer clear of going on random rampages, you're gonna end up with a bad ending. Except that's not entirely true. The game does allow you a certain amount of gruesome fun before it thinks you took it too far and turns the world into a miserable and plague-ridden place. It never specifies it to you in any way, but the exact number of this threshold is 50%. Yep, you can kill half of Dunwall's population before you're held accountable. Now, there are some things to keep in mind here, the most important being that the 50% rule applies to each level individually, not the population overall. But so long as you take the time to count your bodies, you should be able to end up with a low chaos ending. Number 6. Good Morals for Playing Guitar Metro 2033 The Metro 2033 series features a hidden morality mechanic that determines which of the two endings you're gonna get. Compassionate acts and non-lethal takedowns will lead to a good ending, while recklessly gunning down everyone in your path and then looting their dead bodies will reward you with a bad one. Or so it would seem at a first glance. In reality, Metro's morality system is a little bit more complicated than that. You never really realize this as the system is hidden and the game never explains it to you, but you gain moral points for more 
more than just sparing people. Moral points can also be gained through more arbitrary actions, like playing the guitar in the first mission of the game, talking to people, and even using a hooker. If you know which interactions can score you some extra points, you can actually stack enough of them to rampage your way through most enemy camps and still get the good ending. It's honestly pretty hilarious to know that the deaths of a few men can be absolved with a few riffs on a guitar and a smoking session at a local bar. Number five, dancing. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines The humanity system of the 2004 RPG Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is a constant fight with your inner beast. Whenever you lose a point of your humanity, your character becomes more savage and bloodthirsty, making it really difficult for them to blend in with the world of mortals and bringing some unwanted and possibly deadly attention to yourself. For this reason, you want to hold on to as many of your humanity points as possible, especially since getting them back is really difficult. You can only gain them in certain missions and even then, you're limited to only one humanity point per mission. Well, that's the limit if you play the game normally anyway. If you have the patience and the moves to use a certain hidden exploit, then getting more humanity is no problem at all. You see, the game has a secret feature that allows your character to regain their humanity by dancing. All you gotta do is bust your best moves for more than five minutes and you'll be rewarded with a free point of humanity. That's free humanity for just having some fun out in the town. And right after that, you can have even more fun slaughtering innocent people. Number 4. Temple of Avo, Fable The main selling point of Fable is the ability to choose between a lifetime of good and a lifetime of evil. However, like in real life, perspectives can change over time, and even though you started your journey aligning yourself with one side of the moral spectrum, you might want to start going down a different path. If you start off good and want to be bad, the change is as easy as slaughtering a bunch of helpless villagers and stealing all of their belongings. But what if you want to go from bad to good? Is there no easy way for sinners to seek redemption? Don't worry, it's actually just as easy, if not easier, than going down the path of evil. You just need to know how to exploit your local temple. You know, for the sake of good. Each time you donate money to the Temple of Avo, you get rewarded with a hefty amount of good points. However, what the game doesn't tell you is that you get the same amount of points for each donation, regardless of how much money you give. That means a single donation of a thousand gold coins is actually worth fewer points than a dozen one coin donation. Knowing this, you can flood the temple with chump change and you'll ascend to sainthood in no time. Ah, <sighs> doesn't it feel good to be charitable in a small and evenly spaced out kind of manner? Number three, mirror. Miracles, Black and White 2. In Black and White 2, you play as the god of the last surviving Greek tribe. Your job is to guide your followers through their conflicts with rival factions, either by acting as their benevolent guardian or their tyrannical oppressor. The game's morality system is one of its key features, and your alignment can have major effects on the game, including visual changes to you and your people, as well as how your enemies treat you. For this reason, you want to make sure you aren't doing anything that isn't part of your chosen alignment, as regaining your status can take quite a lot of time. Well, actually, there is one quick way to do it, miracles. As a god, you have access to several powerful miracles, some of them providing huge boosts to your alignment of choice. If you want to wage bloody wars as a good god, all you need to do is plant a miracle forest on top of the cities you raised and you'll be just fine. And if you're an evil god that wants to provide good housing to your followers, a quick fireball miracle hurled at your enemies will ensure no one will accuse you of going soft. Number 2. Companion Gifts – Dragon Age Origins the companions in Dragon Age Origins, Bioware's 2009 dark fantasy RPG, are quite a dynamic bunch. They all have their own likes and dislikes, and unless you resolve the many moral choices in the game exactly how they want you to, they might yell at you and leave your party. However, if sacrificing your moral code just to keep your whiny friends happy doesn't sound like the plan for you, there is another more elegant solution, showering them with gifts. Your goody two-shoes companion is angry at you for selling a bunch of elves to slavers? Just gift them a pair of shoes and they'll forget all about it. Your resident witch is upset you refuse to kill an innocent man for dark powers? Just chuck her a pretty mirror and she'll act like it never happened. You see, each companion has their own preferred type of gifts, and giving them exactly what they want can result in a huge boost to their approval. So huge, it can easily counteract any animosity that your actions might have caused. And they say it's bad to surround yourself with materialistic people. 
Number 1. Lorik Bug, Mass Effect Legendary Edition Choosing to play as a Paragon or a Renegade Shepherd in Mass Effect requires you to stay pretty committed to your preferred role. You might choose to act differently every now and then, but if you want to enjoy the perks of a maxed out alignment, you're bound to make specific decisions each and every time. Or until you meet with a certain Turian named Lorik Quinn. Lorik Quinn is a corporate manager residing in Port Hanshan. He's related to the quest in which Shepard tries to expose the corruption of his supervisor and to a certain bug that allows the player to farm as many Paragon or Renegade points as their heart desires. At some point during the mission with Lorik, Shepard needs to convince him to testify against his boss, either with a Paragon or a Renegade response. Obviously, you're only supposed to convince Lorik once, but due to a certain bug during this sequence, you can actually repeat the alignment dialogue indefinitely for an unlimited supply of Paragon or Renegade points. Poor Lorik is probably super confused as to why you can't take yes for an answer, but that's not for you to worry about. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other examples of morality systems in video games that can be cheated. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my X account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great gaming lists. Thanks.